Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, video that I want to do. I wanted to do it for a while, meaning to get to it, didn't have a chance to do it. My main objective with this video is to set up an MPLS VPN network with a RRSP core, where we do a VPN v4 route reflector to segregate your data plane and your control plane traffic. I'll explain how that's done. Along with that, what I also want to do is I also want to set up a DMVPN network on top of it with a forward or front door VRF and an internal VRF. I'll explain the, the advantage of doing it like that rather than running something like FVPN or for that matter, running it with normal DMVPN. So what's the advantage that DMVPN brings to the table in terms of the front door VRF concept? But before we get into the DMVPN part of it, let's set up our network up over here for the SP core. In the SP core, what I want to do is I want to set up my MP BGP name relationships over here within the autonomous system. So this is going to be an intra AS MPLS VPN. All right, so this is going to be my RR. All these guys over here, which are the PE routers. Provider edge routers, router one, two, three, four, and five will set up an MPBGP neighbor relationship with the route reflector. They do not set up any neighbor relationship between themselves, so they can exchange the routes through the route reflector. The good part about that is that when the, the PE router sends a route to the route reflector and route reflector reflects the routes to two, three, uh, four, and five, the PE routers. The route reflector does not change the next route. So if I'm getting a route over here onto this PE router, let's say 10.6.6.0, when I propagate that route to the route reflector and reflects it to 2, 3, 4, and 5, these other PE routers are going to get the 10.6 route. Which would be the next route with the next stop being unchanged. So the next stop will remain as R1. What this allows me the ability to do is set up a separate network, a high-speed network between the route reflectors, which I've done in my case by using 192.1.100.0, set up an IGP so that when R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 need to reach R1, they don't go through the route reflector. So I can dedicate the route reflector for my control plane traffic, whereas my high-speed switch that I have in the middle is just used for data plane traffic. So I'm segregating my route my control plane, my routing traffic from my data plane traffic, where I can concentrate my resources on CPU and RAM here and high speed links over here. So, my first objective is set up my SP core. So, in this setup over here, in these two steps, the first thing is to set up my SP core. In setting up the SP core, I have four steps. Number one, interface IPs. If I'm setting OSPF as my IGP within my core, make sure your loopback is either a slash 32 loopback or you change the network type to OSPF network point to point because my route, the local route, which is going to be, let's say, a slash 24 on a local router, when OSPF exchanges it, advertises it because it's a loopback, it advertises the loopback as slash 32. You need to make sure that it advertises it using the same network that it is seen on the local site. So interface IPs, step two, I've done that already. I just need to change the loopback on the interfaces, IGP, which is gonna be OSPF. And number three is run MPLS unicast routing, which is gonna be my LDP. And step number four, is going to be run the MP BGP neighbor relationship between the RR and these. All right. So these are the four steps that I'm going to do over here. The first thing is let's go to router one and check the configuration of router one. IP interface brief. I have the 10 network, which is the direct network between R1 and R11, the route reflector, and I have the common network, which is 100, where the PE routers connect to each other directly. So the data plane traffic will go through the 100 network, 
whereas my control plane traffic will go through the route reflector with this 10.1. The loopback is over here. I need to check the loopback mask. If it's non slash 32, I need to change the network type to IP OSB of network point to point. So the local and the remote networks remain the same. So that's what I'm going to do over here. And then I'm going to run OSB upon it. What I'm going to do over here on router one is change the interface loopback zero type OSPF network point to point router OSPF one router ID zero 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 one my three networks ten dot zero keep it simple under dot zero and network ten I'm gonna try to paste this stuff onto the other routers. I want to keep it in such a form that I can easily replicate it with subtle changes. So I'll go to router one right now and paste this config. Router two, it doesn't change much. Let's check router two right now. 100, 10, and the 20 network. As I said, that's the link between the B router and the RR. So I'm going to change this to 2, change this to 20, and copy it. Copy it onto R2. 2 is done. Let's go to 3, check 3 up. Again, 30 and 100 and the 10 network. Oops. 30 and the rest is the same. Copy it, paste it. So one to four, check it. This is four, 40, the rest remains the same. I use Notepad a lot because it saves you a lot of change typing as long as you are okay with the commands. Same thing, 50 and 100. Copy. And the last router is router 11. It's not connected to the 100 network as you guys can see from the diagram. It's just connected to different routers 10 20 30 40 50 and the loop back so they'll do that as well over here so this is 10 and we'll say this is 20 so this is 30 40 and 50. Copy it and paste it on 11. And my IGP should be up. Let's check if my neighbors are coming up. I should have five neighbors over here. Two of them have come up. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. So that is all good. My IGPs are working properly. If I go to router one, I should know about the other. Networks and one I am myself, two, three, four, five, and 11. Perfect. So my second step over here, which was IGP OSPF is done. The next thing I want to do is run MPLS Unicast Routing. And the interfaces that I want to run on is the physical interfaces within the core. And all the routers except for the router sector, it should be the same. It's E00 and E01. Let's do that in Notepad and then paste it over here, that would be my next step. This is over here. Step number three, which is MPLS Unicast Routing within ESP core. All right, so router one through router five, it is going to be the same config, which is MPLS LDP router ID is loopback zero. 
and my two interfaces. All right, copy it. And that would be on one. So on two, three, four, five. Now on 11, I have more interfaces than just zero, zero, and zero, one. So I need to do zero, two, zero, three, and I believe one, zero. Show run. I just want to check all my interfaces over here. MPLS IP looks good. Show MPLS LDP neighbors 10 1, 10 2, 10 3, 10 4, and 10 5. So that part is also taken care of over here. So come back over here. My third step, which was this guy, was done. Now I am going to do my fourth step, which is. MPVGP relationship. This is going to be between my RRs and PE routers. So on the uh, uh, S2 R1 to R5, all of them will have the same configuration. All of them will point to router 11 as the uh, the IVGP neighbor, the route reflector, so out of VGP 100, I mean AS 100 neighbor, all of them only have one neighbor, which is 10, 11, 11, 11, which is the route reflector, remote AS is the same, update source, loop back zero, and then I am going to do my address family for my MPVGP, VPN before, the neighbor is Activate. Now, did some of the IOSs have this send community extended on by default? I have a habit of doing it. Just be on the safe side. Do that. So that would take care of my MPVGP name relationship towards my RR. And this is the same config on R1 to R5 because all of them just point towards. So this is wrong. So let's fix that real quick. Address is missing an S. Do it again. Better this time around. Do same thing. Okay. So my R1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are done. The next thing that I need to do is my route reflector, which is R11. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to set up a name relationship. But before I do that, I need to create a peer group, neighbor, IBGP, peer group. That makes it simpler for me. IBGP remote AS. I'm not going to do a rock reflector for IPv4, so I'm going to leave it as is. Neighbor, 10.1.1.1, peer group, IBGP. I'm going to copy this for my other neighbors, which are 10.2.2, 3, 4, and five. Once you do that, now I can go into my address family VPN v4 neighbor IBGP route. Notice I'm doing the route reflector client under the tier group. So that way. I don't need to worry about doing it for each and every individual client. So extended. Now all I gotta do is enable them. 
this I need to do individually. And the last one is 10 5. So this would set up my neighbor relationship in an MPBGP name relationship between the route reflector and all the different P routers. Let's see if it works. Copy it. And I'll go to 11 and paste it. Oops. Okay. I need to spell it properly. Try it now. I don't want the neighbor to be up like that, so this is much better. So this sets up my SP core. It's ready. It's got the MPBGP neighbor relationship set up. The next thing is to set up my uh, DMVPN on top of that using the front door VR. But that I'll do in a different video. The main objective of this video over here was set the core technology up or uh, core network up. And the core network over here was the service product core network, which I have now enabled in such a way that my data plane traffic will be propagated through the links that are directly connecting the PE router to my RR. So all the routes that I get from the customers will be propagated from R1 to 11, 11 will propagate to the other P routers, who will send it to 11, 11 will send it to all the other P routers, and so on. But the next shop remains pointed to the original or the originating P router because I have a, uh, what do you call it, an IGP network setup where the four devices are directly connected to each other. That will make sure whenever the traffic needs to go from P to P, it will go through the common network, not through the route reflector. This way you have segregated your data plane traffic, which is this guy over here, to the high speed switch, and your control plane traffic, which is your routing traffic, through the RR. So R11 is not responsible for propagating any traffic. It's not a bottleneck. Yeah, definitely you want to head up, have another RR set up over here for redundancy. But in terms of bottleneck, it's not going to be a bottleneck because the traffic will move to the central switch. And again, for redundancy over there, you might want to have a couple of switches over there as well. All right. So what I'm going to do in the next video, which I would highly recommend watching, is set up my DMVPN on my customer networks in such a way that I do a front door VRF and an internal VRF. The main purpose of that, and I'll explain that in detail in the second video, is the main purpose is to hide the customer network from the service provider network. If I do a normal MPLS VPN, my internal networks, which are my, let's say, 10.6, 10.7, these networks are actually visible to your PE routers. Let's say there's an instance where you want to hide these networks. I don't want the PE router to be aware of all the internal networks that I have. There is a way to do that. That is running DMVPN on your customer edge routers. And that's my next objective in the next video. All right. See you then.